guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are going to be working on the back half of this thing. Alright, so in the last episode, if you haven't seen it, make sure to go back and watch that. We get the uh, engine built, put together, all that good stuff. Basically regasketed, everything like that. Put a new timing belt and everything on there. Um, I have heard the complaints, Jason, about the front looking terrible. And unfortunately, I agree. So... Everything that's getting replaced on the front is already on order. The crank isn't even torqued down all the way. My uh, torque wrench only went to 150 pounds, uh, foot pounds, and that has to be up to 240. So, order a new torque wrench, or a new tensioner pulley, or new plastic on the front, new water pump pulley, all that good stuff. So it'll look at least a little bit prettier, a little more decent. Hmm. However, in this episode, we're going to be working on our trans and getting that ready with our new adapter kit so that it can be bolted up to the Jay-Z and be ready to put into the car. Or at least test fit so we can do all the other stuff we have to do before it actually goes in the car. I'll just show you what we got. who don't already know what this trans is this is a cd009 out of a 350z better known as the cd09 um there are different versions this is actually not the cd09 yes i just said it was that's what it's kind of there's a long story they have cdo's the cdo1 cdo2's etc the cdo9's came in the late model 350z's and they are in the 370z's as well um However, we're not making like 800 horsepower or anything crazy, so this is going to be just fine. And if it blows up, you can buy a brand new CD-00A, which replaced the 9, from Nissan directly for like 1800 bucks. And then shipping and tax on top of that, so like, your life savings, I don't know, whatever. So the adapt there's multiple adapter kits that hook this transmission up to uh, all the Jay-Z's, the 1J, 2J, BBTI, non-BBTI, all the, all of them you can think of. Um, so the one I ended up going with, mostly because of the great Black Friday deal I got, was from Auto Sports Engineering. Look at that. Oh. Would you look at that? Yeah, look at that pretty piece. Car car. Oh my gosh, the just car. look at it. Car. So the first thing we're going to have to do is get all this extra junk off the trans, um, like little brackets and everything, and then we'll dive in deep to what we have to do with this bad boy. So, let's hop on that. Hello there. I need a shave. I can see you. We are interrupting for a short announcement. Well, I found something. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, <laughs> gotta love it. So, like I said, this kit is interchangeable and reusable, most importantly. So, I had picked this up out of a used, uh, 350Z that had been scrapped. Uh, it wasn't hit like on the front end to damage, you know, like basically the, w the wreck wouldn't have hurt the transmission at all. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, you know, this is a good deal, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I found something that I'm really excited to share with y'all. Uh, what it is, is this fantastic product called JB Freaking Weld that they painted silver so that nobody could see it which is amazing so um instead of being just super upset about it which i was for a little while why why i don't, I don't understand so pfft. um because <laughs> all you can really do is just laugh you know um so like i said it's reusable <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue using this and put the adapter kit on there and it'll run forever and won't have JB Weld all over the bottom of it. All right, so we now have a bare-ish CD09. Uh, we've got the clutch fork out, throwout bearing, old mounts, all the other slave cylinder, all the other bracketry, all that other stuff. All of it's out. Uh, so what we have to do now is we are gonna cut along this seam. I heard it's behind it. Other people say it's in front of it. I don't think it really matters. Um, you can cut directly on it if you want to, if that makes you feel better about yourself. 
Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to come all the way across this scene, yada, 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 all the way around, and just have the bell housing come right off. Also, note to self, buy smaller pants. All right. Came off. <laughs> So as y'all can see here, we actually cut the entire front of the bell housing completely off. I went behind it, which I believe, I'm 95% sure is where you're supposed to go. Um, I think it pretty much put it dead on to where I need to be uh, for the adapter to fit. Uh, everything came out really smooth. So the next thing we're going to do is take off this little cover plate. I believe they're all 12 millimeters. Um, and these four at the bottom are going to be a little tougher to take off. They got a little bit of Loctite on them from the factory. Who knows? Who knows with this transmission? Who knows? You know what you should do before doing this? Probably drain the fluid. Idiot. Oh. So that actually came off really easy. Actually seems to be in pretty good shape. However, our adapter kit came with a new seal, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'll show you all the adapter kit now while this finishes draining. By the way, it doesn't smell good. Remember when smell a vision was a, like a thought? Horrible idea. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. All right, so for an adapter kit, what we got is the adapter kit from Autosports Engineering. So this will mount up to the CD09 um, as well as our T56 slave, which is what this kit uses. Um, I bought it straight from them. I'm sure you can buy it a little bit cheaper on Rock Auto. So it comes with that bearing. Um, I ordered uh, flywheel bolts and pressure plate bolts from the website. That way I don't have to do that myself. They already know what's on here. Stainless steel lines, adapters, hardware, and uh, the seal I was talking about, the new seal. And also, second most importantly is, is a custom flywheel. So um, obviously this side bolts up to the Jay-Z, does its little turny thing. On the back side, it has where the clutch will engage. So it uses any type of 350Z clutch, which I also got. Not from Autosports, got it from somewhere else, but Autosports does offer them, and I think they have twin disc as well, which we won't need unless we go higher than 600 horse, which means we're gonna have to rebuild the whole engine. If we go above 600 horse, we're gonna see Rodney. I don't wanna see Rodney. So what we got for a clutch is a competition clutch, stage four. The coolest thing about this whole clutch is this packaging. Like, it is so cool and it just forms to it. It's, I thought it was the coolest thing ever when I opened it the first time. Clutch alignment tool, bearing, more cool packaging, and pressure plate. I know it's not any cool color, it's black, but are you ever gonna see it? So it doesn't matter. Am I right, the packaging's cool. I thought it was cool. It's done dripping, kinda, sorta. All right, so this thing is basically done dripping out at this point. I've tilted it a couple times, let it go out. All right, so what has to happen next is we're gonna reuse the OEM gasket. We're gonna put a small layer of RTV on our actual adapter plate here. We're gonna put it on this surface here where our gasket is going to rest. That way it keeps it in place for when we go ahead and put it on there. Super thin layer, like you can barely, I mean it's gray RTV, but you can barely even see it on there. So as I noted earlier, these bottom four bolts had some Loctite on them. Um, however, you do not want to put Loctite back on them. But why, Grant? They did that OEM. Because the guys who made this adapter kit said, do not put Loctite on them. He's like, because the bolts will end up breaking possibly and you're gonna have a bitter, bigger headache. He's like, they don't have to be torqued down very hard either. The bolts on the adapter going into the transmission are 30 foot pounds. 
and the bolts coming from the adapter to the bell housing, which is what we'll get to here in a little bit, are 40 foot-pounds. And those are some big bolts. These little things don't have to be torqued down that much. Oh, also, I put the little seal in there. And then I used our bearing here because it perfectly fits in there and you just softly tap it until it goes down into the hole. Just use a dead blow and have some finesse about you. Yeah, Dad, I know it's rich coming out of me, finesse, but... Hi, Mom. And for anybody using this kit, it uses a number five hex head. I've been messing with tightening them down for about 45 minutes now because I originally hand tightened everything and then uh, just did it manually, but I didn't put too much on it. And I noticed a huge gap underneath and it looked like it was really tight on top and really loose on the bottom and I was pulled it off looked for clearance issues and everything like that and uh, it turns out that 30 foot pounds is one more than I thought and two you've got to rotate how you're turning them down so it's really good just to do the star method um, and that way you can torque them down to 30 foot pounds and it goes on there flush just like designed so I was just being an idiot well, that sucked and took longer than I thought it was going to, so, yeah. It's the 22nd of December. I'm sure this is dropping in probably January. All right, guys, so what we're going to do next is put our slave cylinder on. The slave just pops on here, and you have enough space for our two little fittings here to right there. Two holes in this, one up top, one at the bottom, and then two holes here. Uh, it looks like it actually could fit a different slave or a couple of different slaves. But T56 is what it was designed for, so we're not gonna question it. We're just gonna do it. Ugh, camera battery, battery's gonna die, so. But here it is, it's on. So originally, the 2J came out of an IS300, so yes, it is VVTi. No, it is not the twin turbo one. So this is the GE no turbo it had an automatic transmission that's how we're getting our j2 bell housing from how uh, you can tell which bell housing you have so right here on the bell housing it says j2 a j1 is going to say j1 and a j3 is going to say j3 so that's how you tell i pulled that thing off a long time ago to go ahead and get that on the engine stand um it is held in by six ish bolts uh, four are 14s and two are 17s. We're going to pull this thing off and then we are going to go clean it because it is super nasty. Oh, that smells. Oh, that smells like butt. So I will continue this when I get back from visiting my family for the holidays. Hmm. All right, guys, so I don't know when I left off uh, the last time I filmed for transmission since then I basically put the car on the ground which you've already seen we're gonna go ahead and stick our 2j bell housing on uh, on the front now honestly that should about wrap it up I was pretty close to finishing this video before I left so we're gonna blow this off first because all oh, Nathan's forging crap forging crap forging crap is everywhere So far, the kit from Autosport Engineering has been really straightforward, really easy to put on. They do have videos of how you put it on, um, how you put the adapter on. On their YouTube channel, um, you just search Autosport Engineering, because mostly because I think I'm gonna forget to put it in the description. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching to the end of the video. It means a lot. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will catch y'all next time. Now I'm gonna start on the next video. I look weird without a beard now. <laughs>